Okay. Uh, welcome everyone to the newly rebranded TechSoup Connect South Australia chapter, formerly known as NetSquared Adelaide. We have a fancy new name and a fancy new logo. Um, as, uh, as we've done with our previous events, we just want to quickly talk about what NetSquared is and does and, and what our focus is before we introduce our, um, our speaker for today. So um, NetSquared is a, TechSquared, even I'm having trouble with it, TechSoup Connect is a program of TechSoup Global. Um, TechSoup Connect is a global network of tech for good meetups. So the focus here is on connecting um, digital innovators with nonprofits that perhaps don't have those, those skills and that knowledge. Um, and TechSoup is a nonprofit that helps other nonprofits get, implement, and use tech effectively. So you can see TechSoup Connect Global Network spans the globe, so 128 cities this week and, and 41 countries. Um, always on the rise. Um, you can see they're um, pretty well spread throughout the world. Um, common values here as a, as a non-profit driven event. Um, we welcome everyone. We put community first. Um, we build stronger non-profits and technology is one of the tools that we use to do that. Um, we invite participation so everyone has something to learn and to contribute towards um, everybody else's shared knowledge. Uh, and we treat each other with kindness and respect. Anyone can plan an event for TechSoup Connect, um, you know, anywhere in the world. So we're always on the lookout for people to join the team, um, event producers, marketing, welcoming crew, note takers, or if you've got any other skills or experience that you can bring to help us with TechSoup Connect, please get in touch and we'd love to talk to you about that. Uh, the local TechSoup partner in Australia and New Zealand is Connecting Up, which is based in Adelaide. Um, and through Connecting Up, you can access a range of different technology products and solutions. Um, very American slide at prices you can afford. Um, but people like Microsoft donate their software to nonprofits. Um, and Connecting Up is the vehicle that does the, the nonprofit eligibility for that program. If you need technology help, that's what NetSquared's here for. Um, but if you're a bit more of an online person, um, forums.techsoup.org, you can ask your questions there and, and get help from like minded nonprofits. Uh, and our sponsors for the TechSoup Connect South Australian chapter, I got it right that time, uh, are Refuel Creative, which is where I am today, um, and Create Your Change, which is uh, Kat Milner's business. Okay, so uh, I want to introduce today's guest. Um, so today's guest is Neha... Um, I'm going to try pronouncing your last name. I'm probably going to get it wrong. I apologize in advance. Awasti? Yeah, perfect. Okay, good. Um, uh, who is a marketing and mindset coach. Uh, she helps life coaches how not to repel their best clients and market like a human so they can get fully booked. Uh, she teaches them how to market like a human with soul and strategy. Uh, an ex-national marketing manager, she decided to break free from the pressure to wear high heels and shatter the glass ceiling while she was at it. She's on a mission to unmute the voices of business women who want to be trailblazers and be heard. So today, Niha's going to be talking to us about micro storytelling and Instagram. So without further ado, Niha, take it away. Thank you so much, Ryan. Hello, everybody. I am so delighted to be here and talk about micro storytelling and Instagram. It's just so much fun to do this in partnership with TechSoup. Thank you for inviting me. And let's get started. So I am going to share my slides, first of all. And let's see. 
Okay. Can you just give me a thumbs up, Ryan, if you can see the slides okay? All good. All good. Okay, I'm just going to go full screen then. Again, lovely. Okay, so micro storytelling and Instagram are two of my favorite topics to talk about. But first, I'll give you a very brief introduction of who I am. I'm a human, just like all of you. I like to make a mention of it because sometimes we can think that experts or, you know, person who is presenting there is kind of like, you know, from extraterritorial terrestry and it's only you that you're struggling with things in business and life. So it's not the case. I'm also a brown woman. I'm a business owner and I am an ex-national brand manager. So I have an extensive experience in and brand management and working on multi-million dollar marketing campaigns for various um, in various industries, but predominantly financial industry is where my experience is. But I am also a marketing coach who is all on a mission to unmute your superpowers and help you fall in love with marketing, which is not that difficult in my opinion. So you can make more money and help more people and live a life on your own terms. You can find me here on Instagram, underscore Neha Avasti. You might want to just write down the spelling of my name and you can also find me here where I love to hang out with other life coaches and other women entrepreneurs, um, which is a Facebook group called Unmuted Marketing. I've got it, but it's marketing with soul and strategy for women entrepreneurs. So let's talk about what is a story. So a story is any narrative that helps you to communicate an experience. Engaging with a story really fires up a part of your brain, which is left temporal cortex and the region which is receptive to language. That's where the story kind of like, you know, you shoot a story and that's where it hits um, in the audience or the listener's mind. It is simply an experience. And I really want to drive this point home that sharing an experience with people is really what a story is. You just have to learn a few skills to create the same experience in their in audience's mind as you experienced. And when you're able to do that, that's when you know that you have told a great story. So a story's main purpose is to really translate the experience that you have had and when you tell that story to someone else they should be able to have similar experience or have you know some sort of emotional experience and connection with that when you do that you'll never run out of stories to talk about and we don't realize how many stories we have in our bank in our everyday life experiences because stories really help us understand the world. It's, it's something that we do naturally. From bedsides to firesides, we have regularly used stories to relay our experiences and connect with all of those people around us. We have done it historically for many, many, you know, for, for centuries, from, you know, from the day and age, like the, the, uh, the mode of stories have changed, but we have used these stories to communicate events, examine our values, explore meaning and purpose in our lives from day and age. So in this sense, stories offer a perfect common ground for reflection and for us to connect um, at a very human level. And this is very necessary for businesses because in today's age, businesses when you off you know businesses are offering things but that's not what really sells what sells is the connection is the experience is the meaning that someone would get the change that someone would get after engaging your services or after using your product so it's really important that you really make that distinction in your mind that what you're selling directly is not exactly what you're selling. You're selling the meaning and the purpose and the change behind that very thing. And stories help you do that. 
So I really like, you know, this is just an example of how um, stories help us really understand our world. So one of the things that you could be saying to yourself, this is from my own personal example, that I really would have learned to sketch if my parents encouraged me. I was mugged few years after arriving in a new country and I started to think that it's not after all that safe. I took that course and that's why I failed or succeeded, depends on how you interpret it in my career. These are just some of the examples of how we make meaning after we have engaged in a thing, after we have engaged in an activity, after we have engaged in an experience, this is how we interpret it. And these are all like part slivers of the stories that we create in our own head to give it a meaning and to understand what just happened with us. This is what humans do on a very biological innate level. It's very important to understand because when you understand this, you know what's going on in your audiences and your customers' minds as well. So where you can find stories, they're everywhere, in books, movies, you're talking to a friend, observing other people, because this question comes up a lot, like where do I find stories? And more often that question comes up because um, we start with the premises that we don't have any stories. But when you really open up your mind that you know the world is full of um, stories, your mind is full of stories and they're everywhere, then you start to see that everywhere that you go and you experience and you, you know, engage with things on an everyday basis, they all are full of stories that you can use to your advantage and in your marketing. Stories stimulate your audience's minds and to put their guards down. And as I said, it, hel it helps to fire up that part of uh, the brain that is receptive to communication. And when we are doing marketing, it's just very natural that, you know, we are all very smart people and our guards go up automatically. We just try to protect what we have and your customers are doing the same thing. They're just trying to assess like, you know, what is in there for them and what are you trying to take away from them? So that really like, you know, that really puts their guards up and to relax that part of the brain and for you to be able to get through um, for your message to get through to them it's really important that you engage in stories so that it helps to relax um, their brain and they learn to put their guards down and then you have an opportunity to tell them what you want to tell them because if they're not really like if they're locked up in a fort in their brains nothing is going through to them and that's where you know that's where a lot of marketers think that they have to shout they have to loudly like you know send their message across or they have to be everywhere um they have to they have to um you know promote their message everywhere in every possible way but really if you make that message really potent and strong you don't really have to put that much of marketing effort and you can get through very small number of people, but the right kind of message will land with the right kind of people. It puts their mind to ease and they become receptive to what you have to say. The And I love Instagram for that matter because Instagram as a platform is just such a great platform that offers opportunity to tell micro stories in many different ways. It tells, um, like, you know, you can tell visual stories, you can tell in reels, it has a story as a feature itself. And then you can tell longer stories, you can tell educational stories. And that's the purpose. Like, you know, it's not just about telling the stories, but the way you are telling the stories is also very important. So Instagram as a platform offers such a diverse opportunity for you to engage your customers' brains in ma many different levels, in visuals, in you can tell a story in your visuals, you can tell a story in snippets, you can tell real life behind the scene story in you know so many different creative ways, and that really helps to engage your audience in at a much deeper and a much um, sort of um, uh, yeah at a much deeper level in many different ways. 
So let's talk about the most common mistakes that people do when it comes to telling stories. You know, the first common mistake is they don't understand that story is only meant to get them to pay attention. So it's not to do all the selling on a sales page, but it's really to grab their attention and to get their brains engaged in what you have to say. So people have specific ideas as to how to use story in their marketing and in their content. And you know they often think that story has to do the heavy lifting um, for the selling. And it does in many ways, but the purpose of telling a story is not to really make the sale. The first step of telling a story is to really get an attention. And I have heard in the past that um, like sales page must be written in a way that is all serious and can't use these stories. In fact, I think everywhere you're selling is the best place to tell stories. So take that notion out of your head. Like, you know, it's a very formulaic old marketing kind of an approach where you think that it has to sound very professional otherwise it won't be credible in fact when you use stories to your advantage on sales pages on um, instagram captions in everyday um, social media posts um, it really helps your audience to build a holistic 360 degree understanding of you at a very human level and that creates a much deeper connection than any other sort of marketing bland you know boring message so as I talked about, like, you know, Instagram has just such a wide opportunity for telling those stories. You can tell, like, you know, you can use the story feature of Instagram in to tell real life stories, um, you know, real time stories from your life and your business behind the scenes. They're short snippets that would last only for 24 hours and they're 15 seconds each. So you can tell like really smart short stories and really bring the audience in your life behind the scenes and share like what's going on in behind the scenes um, of your business. So audience really love to see like how businesses are operating and how it all comes to life. And they become a part of your, um, yeah, they become a part of your business in that sense when you bring them along and you invite them um, you know, and you open up the kimono and really share things that they don't really get to see in a polished marketing campaign sort of a way. So that's that's why I love using Instagram um, because it has just such a wide array of options to do marketing and tell stories. Captions, you can use captions on Instagram to really share educational information impactful stories and really educate your audience through captions. And this is a great way, like if you think that your audience are not ready to buy from you just yet, this is the way that you bring them along and prepare them to get ready to buy eventually in some time. So by answering their questions, by educating them on things in terms of stories, um, you know, they start to they start to understand things that they need to understand before they're ready to buy your product or service. Reels is a new, fun, entertaining way to tell stories on Instagram. It's the new kid on the block. Uh, not so new anymore, but like, you know, it's still fairly new. Like a lot of people are not taking advantage of Reels, but it's just so much fun. Um, to create those little videos um, and you know all the all the technology and the creative tools are provided by Instagram within the platform so definitely give it a try and try to really stretch your brain as to how you can sort of tell a very small story and in a creative way so you might just want to tell, like you might want to create a reel today to tell a story of how your day, how your everyday looks like, a typical day in your office looks like, you know, just as an example. Or you might want to create a reel on telling them, you know, the mistakes or the misconception, uh, misconceptions that they have about your service or your product. The second mistake I see people making, they want to tell everything in one story. And that 
just is a recipe for overwhelming yourself. So who has done this mistake? I definitely have. There's a temptation that I want to tell everything in one story, in everything in one caption from start to finish. And it's just really good to pay attention when you have this temptation because that not doesn't just overwhelm you, but it also overwhelms the reader or your audience engaging in that story. So like, you know, anytime you write something or anytime you have created, um, you know, a snippet, a story, a reel, just ask yourself that, am I trying to tell too much in this story? And just really cut it down, really cut it down by 10x like you know mentally if you start thinking about it that's when you know it come, it lands um the point that it's trying to make so there is no need to tell like a 20 page story an essay in one caption just make sure that you're thinking about telling one point and just driving that one point home that's um that's the most common mistake i see when people start to tell story even on about pages on instagram captions or even on instagram stories they will just keep going they will just keep going on and on and on about that story so don't do that um the third mistake is when they start to write the story we start to tell the facts like i went there and this happened and that happened and you know that is like we we are narrating as if like one fact after another this happened in 1987 and then that happened after that it is just such a stilted boring version of telling a story so make sure that you're not just narrating facts but you're really putting emotion and you're really tapping your tapping your own emotional state into that story because only then you will be able to communicate that to your audience it is supposed to remind you of the beauty of humanity. It is supposed to remind your audience the experience that you have had, the flaws and the characters and what was going on in your mind in that moment. Even if you look at the photo, like, you know, you can tell such a beautiful story about just a man sitting in a cafe. Like, imagine, like, bring all your senses to that one moment and think that what could have you know, what could be going on in the head of this man just trying to pick one dish from the menu? Like that itself could be a really potent story um, if you really try to bring your emotional state into that moment and then write it from that fact or tell it from that, uh, that sort of state. Because when you just narrate the facts, the stories fall flat and they don't capture the audience and that is the whole purpose right like you remember at the beginning I started off the presentation saying that stories are just a narrative that is supposed to translate the experience that you have had into your audience's mind and the experiences can consist of emotions experiences consist of um, you know, your thoughts in that moment, your experience and what you were doing in that moment, right? So that's like focus on those things rather than just narrating fact after fact after fact. The other mistake that a lot of people do is they underestimate the value and the effect of visual stories in marketing. And again, this is also why I love Instagram, because when someone lands on an Instagram profile that is built very strategically and that is telling a story, um, it's a great opportunity. It communicates instantly what your brand is about, what your service is about, what your business really is about and what what they can really expect in future. And this is such an underestimated tool in marketing to tell visual stories um, because a lot of people just think that, oh, they'll just take a photo of a flat lay, which ends up looking like, you know, a million other flat lays in uh, the whole, you know, on the whole internet. Um, and that, not, like, nothing really stands out. It doesn't tell the audience or the viewer as to who you are, what your brand is, and what they like why they should really stop and follow you and really spend their time and energy in engaging with you as opposed to someone else. 
So even if you look at all the photos that I have presented you uh, in this presentation itself, you get a sense of like, you know, these are the photos that I have taken and they represent me as a person and I'm a personal brand. And my audience wants to know like what kind of person I am and what they can expect by engaging with me because coaching is just such a personal, deep um, and intimate relationship that like, you know, they really need to know what kind of person I am. And if you just look at all the photos, the visuals that I have presented you in the presentation itself, it tells you a little bit about who I am as a person. You can probably take some cues that this is a person who probably loves Italy. It's a person who has an artistic sense, who has um, moody sense and who looks at a world and things in a particular way, right? So thinking in micro stories, this is what I would ask you to do if you want to apply this material into your brand and business. The first thing that you need to do is start thinking in micro stories. What I mean by that is like start thinking like about little stories that are happening throughout your day, that are happening throughout the day in your business, in your brand, in your customer's life, in your client's life, in your own head, and start telling those little micro stories. There is there is a place for telling um, your larger soul story for sure. Um, you do have to find your larger mission story, like why you do what you do. At the beginning of the presentation, I told you why I do what I do. And it's very important. Like that story is really important because all the micro stories that you will find out will really be slivers out of that big soul story. So ask yourself, what is the story behind your business and behind your brand? What is the common thread in all the stories and experiences you have had so far that have led you to this point of creating the business? And then start telling those stories. What is it about your work that you do that compels you and that inspires you? These are some deep questions that a lot of businesses don't often stop and think about because <laughs> they are uncomfortable. The first answer you might get is, I don't know, like, I don't know, like, I have never really thought about what compels. I just wanted to create a business and that's why I do. But that's not what people buy. Like, they don't care, like, you know, that you are in a business for money making. There is a deeper reason that they want to engage um, with your business and you have to do that work to get clear on those stories and that reason first in your own mind and only then you will be able to communicate that to other people. So the reason behind the mission behind my business, just an example, is I think that if every woman felt unapologetically herself, she could create whatever she desires in the world. So this has nothing to do with marketing, but this has everything to do with marketing. This is something that drives me innately. This is what I feel is the purpose of me and my life and my work on this earth. And I want everything that I do in my marketing, in my business, my offers, in my coaching, I want everything to reflect this mission um, and this hasn't this this is one line but this has come from deep reflection and time that i have spent um in just asking myself those questions that i just outlined uh, a little bit earlier if every woman felt trusting of herself she will spread her ideas like a wildfire and all of these um are indicator of my value system that i want to add to the world this is the value i want to add to the world through my business and it's my responsibility to communicate this in my marketing because if everybody could feel these feelings the world will be a better place this is what i believe and that's the work that you have to do for um, your business. If every woman felt whole, she will feel rich and fulfilled life and create magic in the world. So these are some of the statements that really drive me to do what I do. So now I have an idea that this is the big mission that drives me. I have a soul story to base 
um, my micro stories on. Now the job is to splinter this big story into mini micro teeny tiny stories. So I, as a business owner, would ask myself, so what are the times that I have felt these feelings? What are the times uh, that I feel like I have made these this kind of change in someone's life, in my client's life. What was I thinking in those times? What was happening in those times? And I would go about taking answers to these questions and creating like little micro stories on all of these and then using Instagram or any other social media platform of your choice to communicate those stories. I love Instagram because I can tell one story in many different forms. On Instagram, I can tell in captions, in a written form. I can tell it visually. I can tell it um, on reels and stories and then like, you know, also educate them through longer video versions um, called IGTV. So let's see three things that good stories have. First, they have meaning. Then they have details and they have curiosity. These are the elements, um, recipe of what makes a good story. What makes a good story when we say the story was just like, mm, meh, like, you know, it didn't sort of land it didn't sort of create any emotion so these are the elements that were perhaps lacking in that story uh, there's so much to storytelling i can talk about but this is a great start because i wanted to leave you with something tangible like something if you implement these three things and incorporate these three things elements in your storytelling it will definitely take it to a next to the next level so you're going to try them, right? I'm going to tell you one by one very quickly an example just so that it really um, lands with you what I mean by meaning. So asking yourself, does my story has a meaning? So leave them better, leave your audience better than they were before reading your story. That is the purpose of asking this question, lead them towards getting emotionally invested in your brand and that leads them to the sale. That is the sort of the benefit of telling this, but your focus should always be asking yourself, like, does my story has a meaning? For example, if I say my husband went to a market and came back with bananas, he saw Michael there. Okay, I'm telling a story, but it doesn't have that oomph, right? Like you're like, I'm stating some facts. I'm stating some things that happened. And now if I add that, he saw Michael there. Michael is our old childhood friend and he has been living in the same suburb and we didn't even know. Now the story, little story has some oomph, right? Like it has some meaning. Now you know why, what was the purpose of me stating those facts? And now it has some interest. Second, details. Details just bring your stories to life in a very... Um, effective way. So asking yourself, does it have rich details? Am I including some details about that story? Because our tendency can be to just skim over the surface and we forget about the details. So you have to do that mental work yourself first in your brain. For example, we went to the bar. Mm, okay, I'm stating some fact, like we went to the bar, fine. But when I say we went to this Parisian looking bar in the typical suburb of West Sydney. So as soon as you read this, you can totally, your brain went into imagining this Parisian looking bar. You had an image suddenly, and that image would vary according to your own personal experiences of what you consider a Parisian looking bar, if you've ever been to one or not, what your image is about West Sydney, all of that would come into play. But suddenly, when I say it with details, include details in this little story, you suddenly, uh, your brain sent, your brain engages at a different level, right? Like all the neural pathways just fire up and then you're like, your brain is engaged into imagining what this is all about. And that's the purpose of including details. Very, very effective technique. Curiosity, the last one, curiosity. So does it create curiosity to read more? Because the purpose of telling a story is for them to come back to read more. 
because it's important on a sales page, on Instagram post or whatever, if they have a good experience, they will come back again for more. So for example, I stepped inside the door and what I saw was surprising. Normal colors, but a surprising sight. Now you're suddenly curious, like what I'm talking about, like, you know, what was that surprising side all about? And what were normal colors? And um, what was the surprise? You're suddenly into my world. I've suddenly pulled you from across the line and I've brought you over to my side, right? Now you want to know what was, what it, what was it that I saw behind those doors, right? And that's the purpose of curiosity. So always be thinking about these three things um, to incorporate in your stories. Lastly, I'm going to finish off and say that take it slow, take it small and take it steady. Don't try to make like, you know, when you start with storytelling, it can be overwhelming because it might be a new skill that you haven't developed yet. And it, it is a skill. It takes time. It takes practice. So take it slow and take it steady. And then also just have fun with it because, you know, telling micro stories is all about your expression and your discovery. So more you think about your life and what is happening because it requires a certain amount of awareness and really reflect on what is happening in your business, in your life, in your client's life, and then expressing it to create more marketing, to create more meaning, and to really like have this win-win fun cycle from where I see it. And it is a form of art from where I see it. And it takes time to develop any skill, any art form, right? So be easy, be graceful towards yourself. And here is what I will leave you with. If you want to download a free cheat sheet, an easy peasy storytelling format to grip your readers, entertain, and also educate them, then you can do so by following me on Instagram and just send me a DM just with the simple word story on Instagram and I will send you that cheat sheet right away. Okay, thank you so much. I hope this was helpful and I hope you learned a lot from this presentation and i hope you use micro storytelling on instagram i would really love to see that make sure you tag me if you learn um if you're applying the techniques that you learn from this presentation and i will stop sharing my screen and yeah that's it thank you so much Thanks, Neha. that was uh, My pleasure. I um, don't have any questions for the attendees, but the one question I've got for you is um, how do you monitor the the success of the stories and the interactions that come through from those? Yeah, sure. So my philosophy around monitoring the success is you know first there is a phase when we begin to tell stories um, our stories will fall flat it's a practice it's a skill so we have to allow for a phase where we will get no engagement no likes nobody will like you know sort of talk back with those stories um so make sure that you know we allow for that phase of suckiness, basically, like, you know, just even accept that I'm going to suck at it this at this skill for like two months, and I'm going to post one story every single day. So I will start with saying that. And then, you know, the measure, in my opinion, like I get messages all the time in my DMs, in my, uh, on my Facebook, I loved what you wrote. Sometimes people don't comment it in a public way, for whatever reason, like, you know, they could be shy, they could be whatever, they don't even like a lot of times, but they would send me DMs. And it's so interesting to notice that behavior. Um, so the way I monitor the success is like, you know, as long as I feel like I believe that it is him having an impact in someone's life, that's, that's really good enough. And that's the belief that I lead with. Like, that's the confidence that I lead with, first of all, in my own mind. And then, like, you know, I keep sort of a cursory look, like a cursory sort of uh, very loose um, 
sense of like where I'm getting more likes and engagement. And then I get curious about it. Like, oh, what was about this story that really resonated? Because, you know, so many times I would think that I have written an amazing story. Oh my gosh, like this was amazing. And that would fall flat. Like we get no likes, no comments. And I was like, oh my gosh, like what just happened there? Because you just never know, like, you know, what people are going to receive on the other side it's so out of your control. So, you know, a very broad answer to that would be like, I believe that I lead with that belief, first of all, that whatever I am putting out in the world is going to make an impact, is going to make a change in someone's life, whoever is going to read it. Whether that person sends me a message, likes or comments is kind of irrelevant for me because I think what Oftentimes I find when we are too hung up on the likes and comments as business owners, we get so attached with those metrics that we, we, we start to attach our worth with those me metrics. And then we like, you know, don't put out as much work in the world because, you know, what if for whatever reason we interpret them as um, we might get, um, we might think that, it wasn't good enough or however we interpret and give it a meaning. So that would be my long answer to your short question, Ryan. Um, That's all good. Um, yeah. All right. We don't have any other questions. So I'll close today's session. And again, I'd like to thank you, Neha, for being so generous with your time today. Um, I hope that's been valuable for everybody. And I look forward to seeing you in a month's time for Rabina's session on social strategy. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye. Sounds good. Thank you, everybody. Bye.